I can tell you this is like, we have tried our best to confirm this is the same object that, yeah. that was narrated to us over and over and over again. Like, don't get that wrong. This is correct. Yeah. So now, um, is it before? How high up is it? Do we know? I don't know. Okay. Is it before the first or the second foot? I don't know. But um, unfortunately, I don't have the money shot. And yeah. you know, look, I only, I'm you only think as good. it's from the same dirigible? This was 100% from, from the, the same. same yeah, yeah, this was, this video, this second video, 100% hmm. was from that same dirigible, from that yeah. Lockheed Martin built dirigible. And I believe it was the second camera, uh, thermal camera, uh, MX-20 on that same dirigible. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure on that. I, I don't like to overstate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like that is the same object. I know people are trying to say it's a different object, like many miles away. Uh, they have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, Inside the classified system, there's a series of videos that are all labeled with the same object. Let's call it spaghetti monster. You know, yeah. it's all it's all labeled. So that is, um, from what I understand, the same object. Now, was it before? Was it after? I don't know. It seems to be over land, but it does go out into the over the water and then does the performance things that I that I did yeah. explain. And hopefully, somebody will leak it. <laughs> yeah. Let us let us hope. Really crazy. I mean, I'd love to see. I'd love to see it in the public realm, uh, so everybody can analyze it. It's kind of like it's the curse of the UFO thing. It's like um, when I release an image, right, of the other one we're not talking about yet, the, the chandelier yeah, UAP, or even talk, the, the let's talk about it, yeah. or even the 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 Mosul orb. Yeah, I told the public that is from a video, and and that one's even easier. The the the, the Baghdad Phantom. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's another one I'm confusing. It's Mosul Orb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be easy to put public. Remember, they they did a, a video um, using the same, which was uh, called, uh, the, the, it's called full motion video, which is actually like layered optic systems. So if it's at night, it looks full color, like yes. you were talking about. Yes. Yeah. So they could, our government, our intelligence agencies could release that full video. And if they see it, they're going to know, the public's going to know that I'm telling the truth. Yeah. That, 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 you know, so same thing with this. Like if, if they release it, you know, look, people will see that it's uh, straight up. Yeah. Yeah. What is the chandelier? Yeah, so the chandelier. We've got that still image, right? You, and, yeah. And that's when you also, you've got video of it or someone has so video of I it? So I released, there is video of it uh, inside of a classified system that within the intelligence agency people are in hot debate for years of like you know we know our assets we know russia's and chinese assets what is this what is this thermal signature somebody said that's a perfect example of glare oh my idiot so yeah. check it out this object in the video it has a very unique movement it does something very unique and it's no flight control surfaces. You're seeing a thermal signature, but there is a video of this and people in the IC, and you hear this in the special, I'm talking with an intelligence guy who's like, yeah, I'm aware of that. And here are some yeah. of the things. So don't take my word for it, you know, hear that guy. But basically there's a video of this. Uh, it's actually called um, R Space is like a, a, a group within a classified server and they go through and they debate this stuff, just like you or I would, you know, we get yeah. like a little chat room. And this is one of those designated UAP has people baffled because they get to see the whole video. Now, do you know the orientation that we're seeing yeah, it from? Are, are, are we, we looking, looking straight up at it from below? Or are we seeing it from its side angle? Well, or? Clearly, we're, we're you know there's an ob there's an asset in the air mm -hmm. that is obviously filming this thing, right? Yes. So what I believe we're seeing, and I don't want to like make a mistake here because everybody's on me to make yeah. a mistake, but like. We are seeing what would be the tail end of a very, very um, unique shaped object. So this yeah. is the heat signature from that object. And by the way, if you just look at heat signatures, like if you blow like a propane torch, you're going to see like a blast of like color. It's like this yeah. very unique, hot, cold, very specific looking um, yeah. shape yeah. is unique enough because yeah. heat shouldn't contain. You wouldn't usually. get a wagon wheel kind of effect. I don't want to speak us yeah. out of school. I'm not an yeah. expert at this, but um, it's explained to me with the movement. And notice, I'm not going to say too much about it, but notice the little white trail behind it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. A, little, so looks this like is, a contrail kind of thing. Or... So this is in black hot. So what you've got is you've got something cold 
that has a weird movement. If you listen to what I said about that this thing moves weird, that should give you an example of what uh, of of maybe some of the movement of this thing because yeah. you're seeing cold. Why would it be cold, right, in comparison to the thing? And it's moving like this, so it's really interesting video. Yeah, but I'm still trying to figure out what kind of profile if we're seeing it in a profile. I or think we're from, it from above, front, back. I think it's moving away from us. But from above or below? I mean, it, straight on. Straight on. So if it, yeah, so if it was right in front of me, that's what I would see. Is that? Shape. I, I think. I think, and I yeah. don't want to mess it up, but like. I think you're looking at straight on and it, lo- yeah. it, appear, it would appear to be the back of it yeah. because of the way it's moving. Yeah, and, and you're right. And it looks like a, a shape inside the shape too. Your yeah. audience is going to need to go look at these videos. So you yeah. guys yeah. got to visually watch this episode. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh, yes. People we mostly forget. listen to this, so this episode. Is, so yeah. this podcast is called Really? And like yeah. you got to visually watch it because yeah. otherwise you're just hearing some crazy we are, stuff. Yeah. We are looking at the chandelier on screen. But yes, please look it up. And uh, this is a still image. And um, there's more of this to come potentially. Yeah. So are you are you asking from me? I'm asking yes from you. I have a legal limit of what it is that um can keep me a free man. I do not have yeah. this video in my possession, nor am I in the position to release it if I did have it. I I do know exactly where it is, and so do many people in the intelligence agency. They don't need me, but like I can Make sure that people who could release it to you, like Arrow, that maybe they'll do that in their next presentation. Just show them the video. Just show the American public the video. There's no national security issue. It's an unidentified. It looks cooler than a round balloon. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. Just show it to them. But I, I personally, I'm stepping back, yo. I'm not, I'm not releasing nothing. We've talked about this and you've shared. This is um... – uh, it's stressful doing this. I mean, this is a this is a lot. I mean, getting this stuff out there is an incredible public service. You're, as I said, like the kind of the tip of the spear with a few other individuals who yeah, George motherfucking Knapp is one. George yeah. motherfucking Knapp, yeah. sort of the that o- is OG. Legal, that is his legal middle name. It should oh, be. Oh, I'm changing yeah. it for it him. It should yeah, be. Yeah, and um, and there's an interesting there's there's two interesting moments in the there's many interesting moments in the in your special, um, but in terms of just you you talk with David Grush. Yeah. And you go into some, you know, you kind of get into what he's been through. Personally. Yeah. Post uh, the congressional hearing. Yeah. Um, just talk about that. What were your, what were your, what were your feelings for him, about him? You know, yeah. he's been through, he's kind of been through it. Yeah. The public does not know. And, and George and I warned him and he's a friend. So I want to premise that. I'm done being a journalist with David Grush. Yeah. David is a friend. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and by the way, he's telling you that as it is. And you should uh, really listen to David Grush. But with that said, he's just a friend now. I'm just not um, – I'm not interested in reporting. He's a friend. Yeah. Like Bob Lazar now. He's, yeah. he's a friend. I'm done. I've told you everything I know. Yeah. And he seems rejuvenated. Well, let's like talk little, about that. Yeah. Let's say, I'm let's just going to say let's the talk about clip, Bob Lazar being rejuvenated. The clip from, uh, from uh, UFO Revolution that you have when you're talking to Bob. Is like a guy. It looks like a guy who's had a weight lifted off him. Yeah, man. You but there are two. There, but the, Grush and Lazar now are two very different times oh, of this process, they're right? To, totally yeah. different. And like Grush has no inside knowledge on Lazar, so he can't speak with any sort of authority on Lazar, and Lazar can't speak with any sort of authority on David Grush. They they might agree, they might disagree. I don't know. Like David, but, but Fraver, Grush is going yeah. through. Kind of what Bob. That's true. I should get them together because I think there's so much stigma on Bob. You know, it's like he's a problematic person for people. But I mean, him and David Grush, they should talk because um, they have experienced similar, like very similar things. So whether or not Bob Lazar believes David Grush or whether or not David Grush believes Bob Lazar, they have experienced something very similar. Very similar, although they're very different people in different yeah. circumstance. Um, like Commander Fravor, the coolest thing was over the years, uh, man, just why don't you why don't you ask Commander Fravor about Bob Lazar? Get him on this show. We'll call him together. He should be on the show. I'd love to have yeah, David he, on. He Let's should do it. Yeah. A- and ask him about Bob because David, um, sorry, David, Commander David Fravor has a perspective that I think is really important for people to hear on Bob Lazar. Just putting that out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So to your question, David Grush, uh, he's he's a friend. He's been going through shit that people don't know about now. Uh, my point in putting him in the show, because I'm not trying to like exploit a friend, just no. come on the show. I wanted people to like see how we talk because the thing is, is that he has been through a lot that people don't know about. People do know about some of it, like the smash piece and some stupid fucking yeah. article. They're supposed to protect whistleblowers and then they trash them for PTSD. They don't really know why he had PTSD. Like there's a bigger thing about David Grush, like what he's done for our country, yeah. by the way. But that's a story for him to tell. That was a despicable. A despicable yeah, article. Let's not yeah. even give it airtime. But uh, what I've noticed is that I wanted to bring him in because we need to protect whistleblowers. How we treat David Grush is going to give people courage or it's going to dissuade them. Yeah, mm -hmm. So we need to say, look, I don't know if what you're saying is true, but we want to help you get in that skiff. We want to help you publicly and push so you can tell your story. It doesn't matter if I believe you or not, we should protect whistleblowers. We, we, we got to protect them. If we don't protect them, we're going to have corruption in every field, not just UFOs. Mm -hmm. So so that was kind of my point of bringing him in and then bringing Bob in because, you know, Bob doesn't want to do anything. Like he's done, dude. He has been – he's so done for so long. But when you saw him in, the, in my new series, he – you noticed that he's a little fired up, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, I liked that there was that uh, – at the very tale of your your – chat with Bob that feels where he just sort of goes who knows maybe I'll get fired up to get in the fight again you know and it's like and I know from knowing you for these past several years um that Bob does not want did, did not want to go on Rogan did not want to yeah. be dragged back into this didn't want to be dragged back in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but you notice something and I'm just gonna say uh knowing Bob you know he can play it cool like he doesn't care he's a human being yeah. Come on. Like you if you can vindicate yourself, there's a party that's gonna want to do that, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So but he's happy with his life. He's got this great wife named Joy. They got all these animals. They have this like, great life. But I could see that little twinkle in his eye. And I know what he's talking about. So yeah. I see that little twinkle in his eye. And if he chooses to vindicate himself, then he has my full support. Like his mom said in my documentary, like it's up to him. Mm -hmm. if, if he chooses to, he has my full support to tell what he knows. And if he chooses never to do so, um, I completely understand why he would choose that. Is it correct? Me, is there a ton more to his story that we haven't heard? Is that what you, I mean, would this be, or would this be speaking to Congress, for example? So, so, well, is there a form you like think Congress this might Congress has take? everything. Yeah, let's talk about it. So, is there a ton more to his story that we don't know? I don't know how read in you are on his story, his account of what happened. Is but startling, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, yeah. I've heard the- there, there are a lot of details which we don't seen go your into. movie. I've seen the Rogan thing. I've yeah. seen the, you know, but- so, I, so I got hundreds and hundreds of hours of filming about Bob and with Bob. Of course, there's tons of stuff the public, especially if they're introduced to Bob Lazar's story in 2019 when my movie came out. Like 2018, at cusp of 19, like, of course, there's tons more. Bob has always separated what he was indoctrinated into in the program, what he read on paper, what he was told, mm -hmm. compared to what he had hands on. There is a lot more to Bob's story that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of unless you really go back. But there is a critical component to Bob's story. And he has said, so I don't mind saying it, he has said from day one, there are things he did an interview with George Knapp at George Knapp's house, and that was like this, one of the big interviews, probably like four minutes, you know, prior to the movie coming out, like years before, where he says there are ways that I could prove my story. He goes, but I'm not looking to do that. Imagine if everybody believed Bob, what would happen, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's like, yes, I believe that he has a punch or two left in him for public good. I He didn't start with the idea of the public. He started out of the idea of self-protection. Mm -hmm, but I think right. over time, as you mature and you're looking at kind of your life and you're like, well, you know, look, man, life's going to end. And what do I got? You know, what should I do? I think there's a part of him that is a 
just UFO bomb throwing, you know, stand up, let's, you know, harbinger of truth. Mm. I, I believe there's that guy inside of him, but I wouldn't want to do it. I might be too scared to, to go that far. So let, let's hope. Let's hope Bob does what's right for him, actually. Let's hope Bob does what's yeah. right for him. Yeah. yeah. What has been the effect on the whistleblowers, to your knowledge? I mean, there yeah. we had heard during Grush, post, before he went to the Congress, that there's this kind of queue, right? This lineup of, of people. And then and you allude to it in the special uh, through David of like, well, some people kind of felt like, ooh, that, what, I guess what's your feeling? What's your level of optimism? What do you know about who wants to get in this? Nobody wants in, to get, get into, into this. this system, yeah. So imagine yeah. you're working for an agency, right? And you have family and you have direct knowledge of reverse engineering. Maybe you've even been harmed by this stuff. Maybe you've you've had a bad experience. What is it that would make you break from the fold is the exact kind of quote I would use. What would what would it be that you would need to break from the fold? I don't know the answer to that. But but the answer to your question is there are firsthand direct witnesses who are knowledgeable about the physical hardware, the programs, the secrecy, the cover up and the threats who have come to me and George Nav and we have verified them. And that process is insane. And I hope at one point I can tell that. And they are armed to the teeth with evidence. So the question is, how do they do this without hurting the United States? And um, do they let Arrow slowly come forward? Do they let Congress and Senate, do they expect these aerospace corporations to fess up? If it doesn't happen the easy way, it is going to happen the hard way. And, and the hard way is, is very disturbing in that lives will likely be ruined. And I don't want to see that, but I am confident beyond almost anything in my life that we can do it. So it's just a matter of at what cost? You mean yeah. damage on both yeah. sides or just, you know, the lot, just in terms of just it would get ugly. Just people would really not want it to come out and people that are trying to it so would just people turn into that. Will, people will go to jail. Mm -hmm. People will lose their jobs. People, if, if the past dictates the present, people will be physically harmed, if not murdered. They will um, probably, we'll say, threatened. They'll be exploited. Uh, you know, I don't want to be dramatic, but if the past dictates the present, like what we're going through today, if it's not the easy way, it's going to be the hard way. Yeah. And the hard way is destructive. And some people are willing to do that. Not everybody. And again, th these are these are pieces to the puzzle. Not one person has all the information, right? That's what you have to remember. So you're like, I'm throwing an atom bomb and then boom, boom, boom. They get like one little piece and nobody believes it. You know, it's like, was, I, I don't want to get weird here, but like, was Jeffrey Epstein killed or did he um, kill himself? Like, so I, I have no opinion on, I don't, I'm not yeah. involved with those kinds of things. All I'm saying is, let's pretend the worst case situation happened. Who cares? Like, w what effect did that have? So if somebody mm -hmm. gives their life as a sacrificial lamb to get this information out, you know, to try to get it out, there are forces involved in this that no doubt will silence you. Cigarettes yeah. kill you. Yeah. Okay. So it is documented fact that people in big corporation tobacco company harassed, threatened, oh, yeah. and so you understand and what I'm saying. And they knew it. They knew it decades before the public did. Right. The tobacco companies were the first people to know it. But you have a private corporation yeah. that is hiring people to devastate human life. Mm -hmm. That's just cigarettes, bro. Yes. You know, so well, when you're talking about this, you've got a much higher level of, of problem. Well, I think there's one of the clever things that the, um, the program to stigmatize uh, the UFO subject did that I only really started thinking about the other day was that they didn't just stigmatize UFOs. They stigmatized the word conspiracy. 
so that anyone who discusses the conspiracy is going to be dismissed as a, as a nut. Uh, you know, uh, so if you want to talk about the JFK conspiracy, you're a nut. If you want to talk about any conspiracy, you're a nut. And before they did this to the notion of conspiracy, um, you know, we uh, we were we were able to like address the fact that conspiracies do exist. That uh, I mean, if you want to know about a conspiracy, the Iran Contra, huge conspiracy between you know uh, the Reagan administration uh, and illegal army that they that they that Congress expressly for for uh, had forbidden funding and selling selling drugs and weapons to our enemies to to pay for an illegal army. So that was a huge conspiracy. Um, Another conspiracy is the tobacco industry. There was a huge conspiracy to silence that information, information that the tobacco company's own scientists had. That, uh, but there was conspiracy between legislators, um, uh, government officials, uh, watchdogs within the government to not let that information out for decades. So conspiracies happen all the time. I mean, Nixon, obviously, the Watergate was a conspiracy. Uh, so conspiracies are real things that happen all the time. Uh, tw- what, something like 20, 20 attempts on the life of Fidel Castro. Conspiracies. The invasion of the Bay of Pigs was a conspiracy. All of these things are cons- – but we've stigmatized the actual word so that we're, n- so that we're not allowed to address reality mm-hmm. because the word itself has been stricken from what sensible people will talk about. So we saw that with the church committee. And uh, it was a representative that, that came forward and revealed something called MK Ultra, which you know has been kind of put on the internet as like, this is a conspiracy. Project Mockingbird was where they opted journalists. And I can see that pressure already for a long time, for many years, where they want to use your mouth, right? MK, MK Ultra, Project Mockingbird, that is a conspiracy, but, but it's true. And they were trying to, they, people were on the payroll for the CIA, journalists were. And this is this was a big problem. So when you get this um, notion that conspiracies aren't true, yet we come to find out that like MK Ultra was like giving drugs to people in San Francisco and trying mind control stuff, and, and in Canada, and in Canada, they they did it in Canada through I think through McGill University through the hospital system there. They were they were they were um, uh, covertly subjecting people to LSD, right? In in Canada. I would welcome that, but whatever. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> Canada but, needs it. Yeah. But he, here's the deal. Like, so we know these things happen. We know that our power structures have been out of control before. And we know, and we only know about MKUltra because there were, you know, thousands of files in a warehouse that they didn't like shred, you know, in time. That's so the only existing evidence that we have of that conspiracy by the CIA, you know, was because that's so we know that when you get this ultimate power with no oversight, which is right now what Representative Burchett, Representative Luna, all of these people you've seen on the news, what they're fighting against is like, we need oversight transparency and oversight. Man, it's an uphill battle against these agencies. And we saw that dynamic of power control with the CIA when they did those um, programs. So what you're saying is that, if I repeat back to you and you agree, what you're saying is that we have seen true conspiracies before. However, that word is tied to UFOs to try to stigmatize so smart people can't have rational conversations about this. And you've said it to me a bunch of times. You've quoted people. You've explained it to me. Confirmation bias, the whole thing you've talked about, uh, you know, where consent is something manufactured yeah. and there's a Noam Chomsky Noam book. Noam Chomsky you taught book. me all about Great this. Great book. Yeah. Yeah. You taught me about this. And, and so where we are, we're in a place where we need to move past that conversation. We need to move past it now. So what are UFOs? What do they represent to humankind? What does our government know and other world governments that we've seen glimpses of? Like when I released that document from the Five Eyes Foreign Materials Program through Larry McGuire in Canada, Mm -hmm. you know, sure it had been out for like a second before or whatever. Getting that out into popular media, getting people to realize yeah. this is an international issue with implications of sociological and cultural and ontological um, ramifications, we need to move past it. 
the stigma must reduce so pilots can report, so people can report, and we can have an honest conversation. Easy way or hard way? There is an easy way. And the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, and the IAA, Intelligence Authorization Act, that wasn't created in a void for 2024. I have direct communications with people designing that language, not because they want, not because they think, not because they believe, but because they fucking know. Mm -hmm. So what do we do next? We destigmatize. We force the issue. We get loud. We throw stuff out and we try to see if we can get more information. And we force our representatives to do the job they were designed to do, whether elected or just inherited. It's their fucking job. Yes. And Chuck Schumer Amen. is not, yeah, you got Chuck Schumer, not a reckless man, not a man who does things without thinking thoroughly through every possible angle of it, wrote that, wrote one of those two pieces of legislature. Well, he uh, he um he uh yeah. got behind it and helped bring it forward with very strong words. Yes, publicly. Bes yeah, very kind of bespoke, tailored to. Yep. There were many authors. The information, of that. yes, but it's the gang of eight, right? It. The gang of eight. Are they all the, co-sponsors? The, there were there were many authors. Senator Rounds and Senator Senator Schumer Rounds are the is two an unsung co-authors of it. Senator Rounds is an unsung hero in the fight for transparency on UAP. And there are other people who are deeply unsung heroes yeah. that you will never hear about, but yeah. whom I talk about. Because I mean, all legislature, the, the, the authors, the co-authors of it are the people, are just the representatives whose name goes on it. But yes, right. it's their staffers that- well, sure. What I'm know. trying to yeah. make sure your audience hears, there are unsung heroes that you will never hear about mm -hmm. who know- and they are pushing it through and educating along the way. And unfortunately, you'll never hear it. I don't think they care, but like I care. Yeah. I wish you knew who the heroes were. Yeah. But the I'm saying that there's just that notion that that he's not going to write that without really solid grounding to do it. 100%. And there's also this. Without knowledge. Yeah. And there's also this notion, like I saw some, a thing on BBC did a quick thing about the fact that there was a this. The, the recent skiff, the uh, the um, the meeting the other day on Friday, yeah, yeah let's, and they and the BBC they had their panelists come on briefly. They barely t discussed it, but they said, "Well, this is just political gold for them because you know this is you know all these things they the Congress can't get anything done, but they can show this thing." And I'm going, "It's like how do you how do you how can you be a political analyst and throw out everything you know about politics just to dismiss this because it isn't political gold." Because there's, because as you said, there's no distinction between the two parties on it. There's no way you can hold up UFOs as, uh, as something that gives me an advantage over the, the the Democrats or advantage over the Republicans. So it has no political value, and 98 percent of the population doesn't care. BBC are dinosaurs. Yeah. 60 Minutes, dinosaurs. Yeah. New York Times, dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. There's maybe a few people that are good. Like I like that guy Ralph Blumenthal. I yes. think that, I think that he Ralph's is a yeah. I yeah. think that he is a real broker of true information. Yeah. I, I've been able to talk with him. I think he's a real broker uh, uh, of true information. Uh he's in the series that's why yes, I kind Ralph, of got yeah. to yes. hear what he had to say. But yeah. it, it's like they're fucking dinosaurs, man. So yeah. I I hear what you're saying and I I think that the only way forward for us is to just I don't want to say something rude but like throw punches. Mm -hmm. Let's throw some punches. Yeah. You're a martial combatant. You know that. I mean, I, you, I, I got used good, to be, bro. We've got good practice. You know, you've let, seen let, this. As, let's get this you know. clear for your audience <laughs> and for the whole world. Don't, don't. Take I it. used to train martial athletics. I was the worst. I was never the best. I was always the smallest, weakest, uh, but I was persistent. I am not a fighter. Not in that realm. I like my body hurts. I don't want nothing to do with it. I'll run away from a fight if my knees work well enough to run away from it. Mm -hmm. I'm not like no joke. Like that was a past thing. It informed my mentality of how I believe things should be approached. But I am not a tough guy. Never been a tough guy. No, I mean look at your spindly arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> there's a moment though that because this yeah. does take a lot of courage and there was a moment in the there's a moment in the i'm special. just stupid i got no courage go ahead you, well <laughs> i mean look more, i mean i all right okay but 
you uh, in the special again streaming on Tubi. It's fantastic. UFO Revolution. Yeah, man, I watched it. It's great. It's, it's very fucking, good. I highly it. recommend you should watch it, Jeremy. Um, you finish it. The uh, but the, when you're talking about journalism, talking yeah. about the threats, talking yeah. about what that, and you kind of, I don't know, it was, it was, there was a moment you had where you were, where, I, what was happening there? It, it, I didn't want to talk about it then. Why do you think I'm going to talk about it now? <laughs> it was, it, it's a, it's they compelling. Kept it in, yeah. It's compelling. It's in there. They, and it's they, interesting. They, they kept some of that in there. Yeah. Look, um, you can focus on the ways in which people try to hurt you to silence you. You, you, you can do that. Everybody experiences that in some way. If you got some kind of adversity, I don't give a fuck. Something is wrong with my brain. I don't sense fear like that. You know, I, I, I don't care. I'm done caring. I dropped my last fuck the day I met Dave Foley. <laughs> yeah, we all did. It's all, know, it's all downhill know. from there. Yeah. Now life doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're like, this is the greatest <laughs> beer I ever had without somebody else drinking with me. No, mm -hmm. um, look, I, I know what you're talking about. So... Where, where I come from there is there's always going to be people pressuring you to shut the fuck up. They would love that and they'd fucking win. You know, I ain't shutting up mm -hmm. and it ain't happening. So here we are and wherever that leads us, there we go. Fair enough. Yeah. No, it's definitely, uh, yeah. I mean, it's been really interesting just watching from the wings, like watching the ride that you and you and particularly like you and George have been on for the last few years. Like how long have we known each other now? I know because like, like I'll text you at like late at night, like in bed. I'm like, I'm cuddling, hiding under the covers. I'm scared of the world. Here's my dog, you know? <laughs> so Dave and I like had a unique relationship. I tell him my vulnerabilities. <laughs> We've known each other a long time, man. And yeah. I'm really grateful that we do know each other. And, you know, really it's because you stood up for me before, you stood up for me based on the information that I was putting out before you knew me as a human. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, misjudge me as a human you, you suspended judgment based upon what i was doing and i thought that's so cool because most people they take an opinion on what you're doing and making a judgment on your character right yeah so it's yeah. just kind of like it was kind of like i already knew i was like oh that guy um doesn't jump to conclusion like you know believe the things you hear read or are told you know, having a one-on-one -on -one conversation is very different. You get to know somebody, right? That's why for like me with Bob Lazar, it's so important to get to know him, right? Because right. then you understand the whole context. Yeah. So, which um, is the great thing your movie does? It, it, yeah. You get oh, with to Lazar. See, yeah, with Lazar. Yeah, you get to see that. I loved it. The reality I learned of who a lot. he is. Yeah. yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah. I just want to show people who he was as a person. Yeah. Piece of the puzzle never been told in news reports, right? Yeah. So, you know, George had this hard task of doing news reports and pulling this guy in, but like getting to know him was like cool for me. So I wanted to share that, you know, and I mm. thought, well, cinema, let's share it because it gave me an excuse to film him. But we've, we've known each other a long time now. It was our friend Joe Rogan that brought us together in the sense that you went on his show and we're talking about my movie. And Joe and I had been in contact before, but you know, nobody really like said, hey, it's a good fucking movie. You should watch it, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of like, um, that's how we became friends. Yeah. And then you, you came to my hometown, Pioneer Town, you know? And it yeah. was just kind of neat looking for things to do. Uh, so it's been a long time pre-COVID that we've known each other. Yeah. And we've, and we've seen like, just like the, you know, that you've got from, from uh Having this do documentary film against the suddenly being being name checked in the first congressional hearing on UFOs in fifty years, to to being there in the front row of the the uh, the recent hearings with Grush and Fravor and 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 Ryan Graves. I was actually a witness for that. I George yes. and I each. You so each people submitted. might not know. Yeah. George and I each submitted as witnesses on that day written testimony. And I, I encourage people to go look that up. It's yes. on congressional record, but it's on my website. I have so, read both of them. That's cool. And <laughs> yeah. it was, we're, we're just trying to like, so instead of us physically testifying, you know, with our faces right there, I realized, and I think it was common knowledge, like, let's get these guys up there. They're, they're impenetrable. They're, 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 there's nothing, you know, these guys are the faces, but what we wrote and what George wrote even above mine, mine was like a broad thing. What he submitted to congressional testimony, I think was so powerful. And I think people should read it because we were, there were five witnesses that day. 
and George and I were, were two of them. Mm -hmm. Additionally, just so your audience knows, I haven't said this publicly really, but I don't know if we have, but we tried to submit a more than 100 page scientific analysis of the Tic Tac UFO event series generated by an intelligence agency. I think I'm gonna stop right there. Mm -hmm. And we were in that building trying to submit it or negotiating the submission of it. And we couldn't do it because of direct threat to the well being and livelihood of other people. And I want that on record. Mm -hmm. And you can ask George about it if he hasn't yeah. told you about it. That's important. That is real. Yeah. The, the suppression of the UFO information. People say, well, we don't have a lot of data on the 2004. That's why Sean Kirkpatrick, of course, didn't study the 2004 Tic Tac event because it's, we just didn't have a lot of data. You fucking liar. You did. Or if you didn't, we already told you that we have it for you. So that was a real wake up moment for me when George Knapp and I look at each other and, and he had to make a really hard decision. Do we put this on congressional record and put everybody at risk? Hmm. Because, or do we not? And his job, and he's told me, is to protect sources even if they don't protect themselves. And I have followed that mantra mm -hmm. and that truth. So I just want that to be very clear to your audience that that did happen. There is a report. And um, I want to read George's, I want to read both your reports. And, and yeah, I didn't realize that there DIA were DIA can't find it anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's really yeah. interesting. But there are witness statements you can find. That's what I But yeah, yeah. The witness statements. Yeah. The DIA can't the find it. It yeah. wasn't submitted. And when, when they then went and tried to get it fishing yeah. through DIA, they said, we can't find it anymore. Well, I'll tell you this. I know exactly where it is. And I could, with George, they could have a copy in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Just saying. So they were yeah. just hovering during that day. They're no, hovering. not hovering. It wasn't like, you know, you people use cell phones now. They don't have to breathe down your neck. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, what... There was a hearing Friday? Friday. Yeah. yeah. Skiff, what? Like, or, or, or yeah, not what? a hearing, not but a hearing, briefing. Yeah, yeah. Briefing. Did, did, yeah. did what, what happened The there? ICIG, so the Intelligence Community Inspector General. Imagine the police of the intelligence community. So the head was honcho. Was this the guy that was protecting, was 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 um, helping Shepard Grush's whistleblower testimony? So that was the no, first. He's, he's I, the, well, this is the guy who heard the whistleblower complaint. Okay. So the first ICIG ever was a guy named Chuck McCullough. Chuck McCullough yeah. is an awesome dude. I believe he was the first he was, ever. Yeah. He was at Seoul. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. 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 I want to hear about that. Yeah. So, so Chuck McCullough is a hell of a guy and um, he must really know that David Grush is telling the truth to get behind him as the former ICIG and lawyer for Grush. And that was the battle like during the hearings. You know, I had an agreement. I helped set that up. That's all documented, right? So when they were like having other people sit behind Grush, I was like, oh, hell no. Mm -hmm. I was like, his lawyer sits behind him. I actually physically, I was like, if you don't make this right, I'm going to physically move people, you know, straight up. And so they did. No, no problem to the people. It was just like, they were trying to stop. N not they, like it was difficult to get one, everybody on, under oath, which yeah. they all wanted. Yeah. They and, wanted. The th and the they would be staffers. These would be Yeah, not... I, 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 we're not going to blame anybody. But it wouldn't be the actual Congress people or senators. No, 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 no. It was just- um, That were present at the hearing. Look, your lawyer should be behind you if, yeah. you've, if you've gotten through the, the dopser, which is like what you're allowed to say legally, and you're going in front of like open Congress. I, <laughs> I, I imagine- In a minefield. Yeah. Dave Grush is we're walking in a minefield. I what I'm imagine- saying, But like, like, like J Jason Moskowitz and, and, uh, and Tim Burchett, they were fighting these same people. Right. No, no, no. They were doing their thing as Congress people. It was me there seeing yeah. the situation. I had set but this I'm saying, up. But they're being blocked on different aspects. Oh, yeah. They're well. being blocked on different. Yeah, totally but different. But basically by the same intermediary level of government. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I just know that if Mark Zuckerberg was up there and he is testifying in front of open Congress, you're going to have your lawyers sitting right next to you. At least so you can hear them. Like yeah. you play, yeah. you play a lawyer on your last show on yeah. Fargo. So yeah. as that character, Dave, wouldn't you want to be near your clients? Yes. No, okay. that so, every, well, I like, yeah, every hearing I've seen, you know, yeah. 
They're always right there going yeah, like even the congressional <laughs> hearings. The whole so this is Supreme why court Supreme yeah. Court nominees have their lawyers yeah, present. Yeah, I am literally the least qualified person to be making these decisions, but I did this day realize the problem. The mm-hmm. problem was there was a, this attempt to kind of keep Chuck away from Dave. Fuck that. So like mm-hmm. I made sure under no uncertain terms that Chuck was going to sit behind Dave because I, I don't know. I didn't know Chuck at that point, but I just knew you need your lawyer. You have people probably sitting right there in the audience ready to haul you off. If you talk outside of your DOPS or which is your approved talking points of what you can talk about legally when you're talking about classified stuff. So there, you know, so Chuck gets behind them. That's why you saw a sandwiching in there and yeah. George all uncomfortable because we we were witnesses too. We set it up and we, we with a lot of people, we set it up. It wasn't just me and George, like an army of people you don't know, right? Mm-hmm. But there's Chuck behind him and he'll whisper to Dave once in a while, you know, careful, man. Like, because everybody wants David Grush to, to make a mistake with his clearances so they can dismiss him. And I have been the target of, of intelligence agents trying to get me in different forms of communication to say, that David Grush ever talked outside of school and gave classified information, and he hasn't. He's never been a, a source or a leak. He's played it by the book from day one, and because he's a smart fucking person. You're up against a titan with David Grush. Mm-hmm. You are up against a titan. He is fastidious. He is intelligent. He is is litigious. So that's where you want to sue people. He's like, um, he can litigate. Like he's, mm. he's so specific. He's got this crazy memory, which he attributes to maybe some sort of autism. He's just, this is a guy that, and he's physically powerful. He's a mm-hmm. big guy. So you, you're, you're up against King fucking Kong with David Grush. Yeah. And this is a guy with a, a long career in intelligence, in the military and in intelligence. He is a trusted intelligence agent. Yes. With, worked for two of the most you know, important strategic. More than you know. You know, the NRO and and uh, g- the geospatial are two of the, our most The National important. Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the NRO are very important. But also, David Grush probably has more history than you know as an American, uh, American patriot. And I, I would say that this is a guy I would trust with our country, with national intelligence, and, w- and with my life. Um, this is a guy that I think is a formidable power and he's speaking truth to power. And I also think that he is worthy of your attention. Yeah. And let's just find out if what he said is true. Yeah. Simple as that. He did. It. Yeah. Yeah. And and we should distinguish that, that, that there's a difference between a four year meticulous investigation and, uh, oh, he had some friend that told him some stuff as oh, the yeah. NASA chief. Uh, They're just, t- you know. They're just uneducated. Yeah. yeah, I don't blame them. They they just don't get it. They but, don't yeah. know it. But for people who Bill think, Nelson but for people who keep saying, "Oh, it's just hearsay," a four a four year meticulous investigation by a trained investigator. Yeah, he is actually different. Has, it's different from hearsay. He actually has what what I would call first hand knowledge of it as well. Yeah, it's like and saying, he'll it's like talk saying, about it. Later, it's like saying the pro, a prosecutor in a murder trial. Just has hearsay because the prosecutor didn't commit the murder. He does have firsthand knowledge. Yeah, yeah I would, I, w- I would definitely say that David Grush has an element of firsthand knowledge. Now, it depends what you mean by that, right? So, like, you know, David Grush, from what I understand, and of course, he couldn't tell me if if he did, but I, from what I gather, he didn't like walk in and see a spaceship. But if you, I'm just going to make an assumption here. Mm-hmm. Don't know if it's right. You work at the National Reconnaissance Office. They they basically operate or own the hardware of like our greatest satellites. Then you work right. at NGA, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which are basically the analysts that look at this imagery from our best satellite hardware, which oftentimes are pointed out to space when it comes to UAP, not just at Earth, but they do both ways, also at Earth and in our upper atmosphere. I would assume from his comments, if you just listen to them, I would assume when he was asked that question that if you had the right authorities that he would tell you that he has does have first-hand knowledge and that first-hand knowledge would be in the form most likely of uh, direct imagery and program read-ins with detailed analysis, scientific analysis and imagery of what we call UAP, UFOs, We're talking about spacecraft by non-human intelligence. I would argue that that would be my position that most likely he does have some 
what we'd call firsthand experience of being exposed to legitimate classified documents that reveal visually the things that we are most interested in. Hmm. Straight up. But you have to ask him, and yeah. I, I don't know that as a fact, and I think that he'll write an op-ed or something, and maybe if he's cleared, we'll talk about it. Because remember, mm -hmm. remember, on, on Weaponized, the head of the DIA UFO program- I like, want to talk about this interview. James Dr. Lekatsky. James Lekatsky told me and George that he not only, that, that they had a spacecraft, and he was meaning yeah. of non-human intelligence, that we didn't make, Russia make, didn't make, China didn't make, and that they breached the whole of it. This is a bombshell. It, yeah. it was a total bombshell. That whole, George that whole interview was, was a fucking amazing, yeah, George amazing thing. And I thought you guys did an amazing job, and I thought mm -hmm. you got a lot out of it, even though, even though yeah. I know you guys were hammering because he's unbelievably sort of elusive. He's a by-the-book guy, which is the kind of guy you want yeah, in charge of the DIA. Yeah, so Let me I've, just ask you straight yeah, up. I've said what I can say. I can't he's elaborate. The head of the, respect. respect. Yeah. So the DIA put him in charge of... OSAP, correct? Yeah. Yes. And he, so he is the designated by our intelligence agents, that by the DIA to, this is James Lukaski we're talking about. This This is an interview James on Weaponized. Lukaski. Recommend Physicist. everyone to listen to this, yeah. this right. interview with Colm Kelleher. Um, and they've written books. So this isn't someone who is in any way saying this is not a phenomenon. I mean, he's been up to his eyeballs in it for- More than you know. Forever, right? Is So in your mind, and in the in the sort of like layman, you know, I'm referring to myself. You know, uh, is he a gatekeeper? Has he does he has he put hands on the ships? Okay, James Lukatsky is a true American intelligence agent patriot. He's the kind of guy that you want in these programs. He is unwilling to speak outside of his dopser. The reason he could tell me about the craft and breaching the hole. Word for word is because his DOPSA request, which is you're asking the government, is this endangering national security? He was allowed to talk about it. It is the truth. The DIA and his personal ability to know about, I'll just say, one of our non-human intelligence craft and then breaching the whole of it, that's all he could say word for word. And you saw me pressure him yes. on weaponized. Mm -hmm. And he's a friend. I don't mean to pressure him, but... Come on. Yeah. Is he a gatekeeper of the negative kind? No. He's the kind of gatekeeper you want. He's the guy that keeps you safe at night because he is by the fucking book. He's writing these books with George Knapp and Dr. Colin Kelleher, and they're trying to get out as much information as they can in the legal way. I suspect if Congress subpoenaed, if the Senate Intelligence Committee or whatever subpoenaed James Katsky, he'd be willing to talk about it as long as Congress people don't talk out of school and they don't leak information. That's his big fear. And I do, look, mm -hmm. I got sources everywhere. I do know, you know, loose lips sink ships. So James Lukatsky is a hero, man. He's a guy that you want in the position of the DIA. People give him a hard time online. They shouldn't. He has protected our country. So I can't say to you, if James Lukatsky has physically seen the craft himself, because he's never said that. Right. If he decides under the right conditions, in a skiff, with authority, with a subpoena, which maybe he'd welcome, then he would tell what he knows as long as it's secure. But he is number one country, do no harm. That's Dr. James Lukatsky. So he's not a gatekeeper in the bad sense. Does he know more? than the American public about non-human intelligence, UFOs, extraterrestrials, interdimensionals, extratemporals, all of these things, 100%. He does. So the question becomes, how can we help him to tell the American public? And that's mm -hmm. the position I'd like people to take with Dr. James Lukatsky. Help him to tell the American public, understand who he is, He's a protector of our country and mm -hmm. you should listen to him. And yeah. he's one of many. I yeah. think Lou Elizondo, I think if Lou Elizondo was asked to testify and he knew that security of national security in the United States would be okay, that he would unleash. I believe that he would. He's a patriot, I believe. Um, and we know there's more to these stories. I would there are more to their stories. We know that what, 100%. We, what we've gotten is just a sort of tip of the iceberg kind of thing. Yeah. 
Well, like, not, I think yes. James Lukaski and Lou, you see them be very, both very careful, careful circumspect, I think would be the term, okay. about what they reveal, what they do say. And and especially with, I think, with, I think with Lukaski too, but, but with Lou, definitely he will intimate where where there are areas that he can't go into, but somebody should. Lou is an in, in an impossible situation. Yeah. So is James Lukatsky. So are other people. Now, some people want to tell more than others. Like they believe in disclosure. Like I feel that uh, Lou Elizondo has the, and I'll let him speak for himself, but I do believe- If we ever get him. <laughs> yeah, you got to get him. You got to get him. I, I do believe that, that he is a proponent of like, all right, put the cards on the table. Let's figure out what's going on. The American public has not only a right, but a need to know. I don't know that James Lukatsky, Dr. James Lukatsky feels the same way, but push come to shove, those guys are patriots. And if they're put in the position, I believe that they would not only tell the truth, but they would provide actionable intelligence on how to forward our understanding of this. And I'm making an assumption, but it's an informed assumption. Mm -hmm. So I, I really hope those guys get the chance to, to do well, that. Here's what I'm excited about for 2024. We've got You've come out fucking swinging yep. with UFO Revolution, streaming on Tubi. This has been awesome. Um, I, I'm, it's great. We've both watched it. It's, fan, it's really cool. It's just, it's got great new stuff. It's got a great, but it sets the foundation beautifully. Like the context is amazing. Like your conversations. I mean, it's it's really, really good. Um, so, and now you're telling me like, well, we kind of knew this, but it's like, we've got we've got good guys in there fighting yeah. the fight. We do. There's, there's, there's good folks outside like yourself and George, you know, but also with all the connections inside as well. But we also have people who are still in there, some anonymous, some not fighting the good fight. What, like what's, what's, where do you think we're headed? Like what's next? What do you? This is a unique moment in history. We are on the precipice of an honest conversation about UAP UFOs and what they might what they might represent to, to humankind, I don't think anybody has all the answers, even if they pretend to, which happens all the time. But what I see happening is this. It's easy way or hard way. The me mechanisms, the architecture for confirmation, official confirmation to occur is in place. Is it going to happen that way? Don't know. But I'll tell you, if it doesn't, mark my words, there are people ready and armed to the teeth to do it the hard way. And it will cost them personally, but they're willing to do it and they're ready to do it. And I don't think that's going to change. So what that means is direct firsthand witnesses with documents and evidentiary proof. Now, I'm not a crystal ball guy. I, I don't make predictions. I don't even know when my alarm clock's gonna go off when I set it. I, I don't, I'm really bad with this shit. But I, I will tell you that I'm not gonna stop fighting and, and I'm nothing compared to the other individuals uh, involved behind the scenes that are ready to throw punches. So I'm very optimistic, although I'll, I'll warn you, I'm an optimist. I, I think life is beautiful. I really like people and I'm enjoying this ride, and I think things are always gonna turn out great, and if they fuck up, they end up being better than I thought. So be forewarned, I'm an optimist, so. That's good. You hang out with a, a good pessimist, though. George. George. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's great, man. I swear at his core, he's not, a, he's like, I'm just looking for the dark lining in your silver cloud, Jeremy. He said that to me the other day, I was laughing so hard. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I, I do think it's gonna take a little bit of grit, a little bit of will, a little bit of push, a little bit of uh, gunpowder, you know, like metaphorically, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to, to make this thing pop, you know, this to, to crack the egg as was said to me by an uh, intelligence officer 20 years ago, probably now, um, it'd probably take, uh, a lot to make this crack, but we are seeing fissures. And I think that if the public is engaged enough, people always ask, what can I do? What can I do? I'm just a you know, lady in Ohio, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Be loud, make noise, ask questions, push. That's what you can do. I don't know what else specifically, 
And I don't know how this might happen or not happen, but I know we are on the precipice of a different understanding of the ecosystem that we live in, that it might be more vast, might be more alive than what we've ever considered prior, and that we might even be seeing it for less than it is. And, and that's exciting. Mm-hmm. That is exciting. Well, yeah. Probably a good place to stop. I'd say. I mean, I can't top that. Um, dude, thank you so much, Jeremy. Yeah, it's, it's just been guys. great to talk with you. Uh, we will hopefully do it again soon. But yeah. just, mm-hmm. man, just keep on keeping yeah. on. You are the tip of the spear. And um, thanks for putting up with you. <laughs> We're one of the tips of the spear. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you for being here. This was fucking awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Dave? Thank you for being here. Thank I'm you. I'm glad for we were all together. This too. is great. Yeah, and it's like, nice, it's nice to do it like this again. Boxes. I, I got to awesome. tell you, pe- people, I mean, it, they're not going to get this message unless they're already listening, but people should listen to your podcast mm-hmm. because I am never more unruly and unfiltered <laughs> as when I feel this comfortable on your show. Love so it. maybe take that snippet mm-hmm. and make people listen. Because mm-hmm. honestly, I when I sit down with people, they usually have agendas. Um, they, they usually are trying to get, get me with a gotcha moment or it's just uncomfortable. I, I never get to speak this openly as, as when I'm sitting with you guys from the two times we've done it. So if you use that as a clip to listen to this it's podcast. Right. We're, we're already cutting it right now. Jack, <laughs> Jack yeah. on that? Yeah. If you want to know the truth about UFOs, this is good. The yeah. closest you're going to get because it's the most I know. I know nothing else from what I've said today. So awesome. thank you guys yeah. so much. We had a great time. Appreciate thank it, you, buddy. guys. All right. Awesome. Next time then. Round All three right. next time. Yeah. Okay.